This might be the craziest beef burrito I've ever made and here's how you make it. First, let's talk about the beef. Here I have sirloin, which is one of the leaner cuts of beef. As you can see, it doesn't have a lot of intramuscular fat, which is both good and bad. The good thing is that this piece has very good macros due to the small amount of fat. However, the bad thing is that it can be tough and dry, but there are steps to prevent this from happening. First, cut this piece of meat into smaller strips, about one and a half centimeter or half an inch thick. Use 100 to 120 grams per burrito. Cutting it into smaller strips not only makes it easier to eat in the burrito but also allows her to do something that many Asian style restaurants do with their meat to make it more tender. Prepare a bowl with cold water and add in the beef. Then wash the meat by massaging it for about a minute. This will loosen up the muscle fibers making it more tender and allowing it to absorb more flavor. After a minute use a strainer to remove the water from the meat. The red color is not blood by the way, this is called myoglobin and gives beef its red color. Once you've removed the liquid, place the meat into a bowl and then do the second step that is very crucial to this, add a small amount of baking soda. A very small amount goes a long way here, don't overdo it because otherwise it will get a weird flavor. Baking soda will make the beef more alkaline resulting in a tender and juicier cut. Many Chinese restaurants use this technique to achieve the signature texture of their meat. Mix the beef with the baking soda ensuring everything is coated and set it aside. Next is the sauce. Put a glass on a scale and start with 20 grams of soy sauce. I personally prefer regular Chinese soy sauce as I like my food very salty. Soy sauce contains about 17 grams of salt per 100 gram of sauce. However, if you prefer less salt, there is also a low sodium version available. It contains about 10 grams of salt. The taste difference is very noticeable. Choose the one you prefer in terms of calories, they are the same. Next is 5 grams of gochujang. This is a thick chili sauce with fermented soy and has a ton of flavor. It's a thick paste that works well in almost any savory dish. However, start with 5 grams for this recipe if you are trying it for the first time, as it can be a quite spicy. Then add 5 grams of honey for a bit of sweetness and lastly about 1 gram of cornstarch. The cornstarch will give the sauce a sticky consistency, which is perfect for a burrito style recipe like this. Mix the sauce well and set it aside. For the vegetables, you can use either cabbage, which probably most of you have access to. However, if you can find this vegetable called pak choy, I would highly recommend using it. This tastes like broccoli but on steroids. Either way, you will need about 100 grams of vegetable. I will cut the cabbage first lengthwise, then turn it and cut into smaller pieces. Next, dice a medium yellow onion, this weighs about 50 grams, then prepare a 23 centimeter or 9 inch flour tortilla, which contains about 180 calories, and then it's time to cook. But before that, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Element. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink mix with everything you need and nothing you don't. That means lots of salt with no sugar. Element is formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and is perfectly suited to folks following a keto, low carb or paleo diet. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio, 1000 mg of sodium, 200 mg of potassium and 60 mg of magnesium. With none of the junk, no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no fillers, no BS. When you sweat, the primary electrolyte loss is sodium. Athletes can lose up to 7 grams per day. When sodium isn't replaced, it's common to experience muscle cramps and fatigue. I'm personally using this for over a month now and really love it, especially for my cardio having sessions where I sweat a lot. Also dozens of professional teams and players from the NFL, NBA and the NHL are monthly element subscriptions typically recommended by the head of sports performance and nutrition. You will receive a free sample pack with any purchase that you buy through my link and if you don't like it, Element will give you your money back, no questions asked. So head to drinklmnt.com slash and get your free sample pack on any purchase. Free the pan to medium heat, add a bit of oil and start cooking the cabbage and the onion with a small pinch of salt. The salt will help release water from the vegetables and cook them a bit faster. Fry them stirring occasionally for about 3 to 5 minutes until the onions become translucent and everything starts to caramelize. This will add a ton of flavor. Once the vegetables have a nice browning, push them aside and add another bit of oil before adding the beef. Spread the beef in the pan so as much meat as possible gets in contact with the surface. This will add a ton of browning and again a ton of flavor. Let it sit for 1 minute. For seasoning I will only add freshly ground black pepper and a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. The sauce have already a ton of flavor. After a 
minute, mix everything and let the beef fry on the other side for one more minute. Once you have a nice color on both sides of the meat, I will add the sauce and it will immediately start thickening, creating a syrup-like consistency. This is exactly what we want. If the sauce becomes too thick, you can add a small splash of water and continue simmering. This only needs about 30 to 45 seconds in total until it gets a very sticky consistency. This is perfect. Now, prepare your tortilla and as a base, I will add 0.2% fat cream cheese. This tastes amazing in combination with soy sauces. I highly recommend using this as a base. Spread 25 grams of cream cheese into the tortilla, leaving a bit of space around the edges. Then add the entire beef mixture on top of the tortilla. Give the pan a quick cleanup, place it back on the stove and add a little bit of oil still over medium heat. Then flip both sides of the tortilla towards the middle and slowly roll it into a burrito shape. Place it back in the pan and fry all four sides for about 30 to 45 seconds until it is nicely browned. Then wrap it in aluminum foil or parchment paper and there you have one of the craziest tasting burritos I've ever made. This is absolutely delicious. The macros for this burrito are 460 calories, 51 grams of carbs, 26 grams of fat and 34 grams of protein. If you like this recipe, you need to check out my cookbook. Low calorie, high protein recipes that will help you lose weight and keep it off for the rest of your life. Finally, a diet that works. From breakfast to lunch to dessert, everything you need is in this book. And the best part is that I will constantly be updating the book and you will receive every update for free once you've purchased the book. It's a lifetime investment into your health for $50. So in my honest opinion, that's an absolute no-brainer. The link is in the description.